Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlet Images, and this, this video is inspired by a question I was recently asked about lens reviews. Somebody said, you do lots of specialist lens reviews, why don't you do useful lens reviews? Well, obviously I'm going to uh, take issue with the fact that uh, you know, the lenses I look at I regard as useful, but that's, that's another matter. Um, but it followed on from that, they wanted to know what my opinion was of expensive lenses. Now, this is typically uh, third-party primes, um, but expensive lenses in general, were they worth it? Now, uh, this also includes some of the manufacturer's own lenses. Certainly, I still shoot uh, uh, Canon 5DS, EF mount, so I still use some EF mount lenses. The RF lenses are excellent lenses, and I'm sure I may well get some when I get myself an RF mount replacement for the 5DS, but that's not here at the minute, so that's neither here nor there. At the moment, I'm using a 50 megapixel 5DS. Um, so the question comes down to, well, apart from doing reviews of lenses, um, are they actually worthwhile? Do expensive lenses make a real difference? Do you get better photographs from better lenses? Well, it depends as ever on your definition of what you mean by better. Um, suitable for the job is my own personal distinction. So hence, you know, I do an awful lot of use of uh, tilt shift lenses. There's a 17 millimeter here from Canon. There's a 24 millimeter from Canon. They're not cheap lenses but they are specialist lenses, they do what they do, and they happen to be good quality as well at the same time. Now, if you're worried about expense and that, you can often find tilt shift lenses uh, available secondhand at reasonable value, and they hold the value as well. So if you get fed up, decide you don't really want uh, tilt shift lenses to use them at much, then you can sell your lens on, and you probably won't lose very much at all. Um, they, it, it's quite a healthy secondhand market. Uh, buoyed up by the fact that people buy them, haven't a clue how to use them, find they haven't used them, and sell them on. Uh, in fact, that's also the case for lenses like this, which is the Canon EF815 Zoom Fisheye. Now, that's an expensive lens. It's a very specialist lens, but I'm an architectural photographer, industrial photographer, and I use it. So uh, many of these lenses I do have um, reviews of and examples of their use on the North Light Images website. But this was, I think, perhaps somebody was looking at some very expensive prime lenses and thinking, well... Will my photography be better if I use better lenses? Well, I'm going to say, first of all, that photography, it, it, it's a chain from when you pick up the camera, take the picture, right through to how you process your images. From, and if, like me, you enjoy printing as well, how you print your images. It's a chain. And gold plating, just the first element, or the or first link of that chain, is not really a way to improve the quality of the whole chain. Um, so spending a lot of money up front, you perhaps need to look at other aspects of your photog photography workflow uh, because that's what it is. It is a whole thing. To me, photography ends for print workflow when I have a print that I'm happy with. All the bits down the line have contributed to that, including the lens quality. Now, as I said, good lenses do a job. So 17 and the 24 here, great. They're nice. Um, they, they're perfectly good standard 24mm, standard 17mm lenses if you want to use them as an ordinary lens. They just happen to have all the other stuff. Now, they don't have autofocus, but that's not a problem. Okay, what about other more general lenses? Well, this is my trusty EF2470 2.8L lens. Um, that lens there and this 7200 2.8L IS are both bought in 2003. So they're nearly 20 years old. I still use them. But surely there are better versions of the 7200 and there are better versions, modern versions, um, of the 2470. Yeah, they are. How much better? 
don't know really. These are good enough for what I need. I happily use these on a 50 megapixel camera, no problems whatsoever. If I need to do a bit of sharpening, a bit of cleaning up the images, then so be it. However, I'm not shooting test charts with these. I'm using them in factories. I'm using them outdoors. I'm taking pictures of people at work, machinery, details of buildings. None of this stuff needs the expense of better lenses. Now, if these, these were not cheap when I first got them, so they've held their value. They've, they've been worthwhile. But you know, at a point, I'm going to have to replace them. What about third party lenses? Well, and this is partly why somebody was asking me about reviewing lenses. They'd noticed that I do reviews of things like Lauer's shift lenses, Lauer's uh, probe lens, macro lenses, all specialist lenses. They'd also noticed that I've looked at some Sigma lenses in the bar and some other makes as that. These tend to be lenses more at the extremes. Why do I do reviews of specialist lenses? Because specialist lenses have a real use and you're not comparing them looking at lens detail charts and things like that. You're bothered about can the uh, lens actually do the job I want it to do? Can it take the photos of the type I want to do? I would find it very difficult if you gave me, let's say, half a dozen 50 millimeter prime lenses of a range of manufacturers, manual focus, autofocus, doesn't really matter in, in this, although obviously it's a matter to some people. But so I've, I've got a range of these 50 mil lenses. What do I test? Without falling back on lens testing, and lens testing on just single samples is always suspect. So anyone who shows you a review and makes some grand claim about a lens, and they've only tested one lens. Bear that in mind. Ideally, if I'm really interested in technical features of a lens, I will look somewhere like Lens Rentals, who will do testing of a wide range of lenses, and they will look at sample variation. Um, individual lens tests, so what? Um, I can't really show you much. Um, I can show you it's a 50 mil lens. So I've got this half dozen 50 mil lenses. What difference is there really between them? Okay, some may look better when they're wide open. How often do I shoot 50mm lens wide open? Most people don't. By the time you've stopped them down a bit, the difference has become almost negligible. Well, some may have a more famous name than others. Once again, that may make a difference. If you're working professionally, you ideally need to know that the kit you're using if it is replaceable. Uh, or fixable if you break it, if it's that important. So hence, yeah, my 24, 17 mil here, I can get these repaired, I can get them replaced with another one. All of these have paid for themselves many times over. But yeah, when I look at stuff like this, it's all doing a job. Also, when looking at third party lenses, I mentioned specialist lenses, which are the lower ones I've looked at. What about value? Well. There are lots of cheaper lenses, and cheaper lenses have got re better in recent years. Cheaper lenses used to be very variable. Now, I've got some old lenses here, and these are 1970s lenses or thereabouts. So I have one I looked at recently, Russian 135mm, Jupiter 11 uh, lens. It's useful. Um, I can't offhand think of a particular use I might have for it, but it's great to play with. Here's the Helios 44, this uh, 50mm uh, uh, lens, or I should say 56mm uh, lens, this one I was, sorry, 58mm lens, shows you how often I worry about focal length. Yeah, it has interesting bokeh and other features like that. Um, I'm going to be honest and say there is not a single lens here that I use in my normal photography, and that's not when I'm trying to make a point teaching something or something like that. There's not a lens here that I use because of its look. Um, it is vastly overrated, uh, is my feeling, is that a lot of people um, read a lot into the look of a lens. And, well, great, if that stuff inspires you, by all means, go for it. 
But I often think it's actually a diversion from looking in detail at your real photography. And in fact, an awful lot of this stuff that I read and hear about lenses is people looking for a diversion from the real way to improve their photography, which is to actually think about what you're photographing, why you're photographing, and what you want to do with it. Um, you know, all this stuff about lenses, you know, I don't see really that much of a difference. Yes, I can use cheap lenses. I prefer to use better quality lenses because they're easier to use. If uh, I've still got here, this is a uh, Canon 10 to 20, 10 to 18 millimeter lens, EFS. Use that on 100D. Uh, Karen used to use this uh, shooting stuff. Really enjoyed it. Great little lens. Easily correctable, fixable in software, any aberrations and the likes. Um, it's a perfectly good lens. Why would you want anything more expensive? Well, you might want something a bit more robust, you might want something a little bit wider aperture, but when it comes down to it, all of this stuff, people worrying about great lenses and good lenses, um, I'm a bit lost. As I said, I think it's people looking for excuses not to do the hard stuff, which is concentrate on your photography. So when it comes down to the really expensive stuff, you know, the, the sort of Zeiss lenses, Milvus lenses and the likes like that. Would I test them if I was lent some? Of course I would. I'm fairly certain I'd find it difficult to justify spending that much money. Um, then again, I drive around in an old car because I don't care about it being a good car. It's a useful car. It works. I suppose in a way that applies to my photography as well. Because if you look at anyone who's just bought themselves um, a particular brand of German car over another brand of German car and ask them to justify why they did it, you'll get a lot of spurious hokum in it. Uh, very little of it will have any real meaning in a, you know, you know, in, a, in a meaningful way which you could use to convince someone else. It's all about what you feel about it. So, if you feel happy spending three to five thousand pounds on a manual focus prime lens and you feel you're getting better uh, results out of it, well, good for you. Um, I'm going to suggest that I would much rather have the three to five thousand pounds, use what I've got, and go somewhere nice and do some interesting photography. But to whatever works for you. So, I'm really saying is use what you've got. Exhaust what you've got. The reasons I don't test expensive plain lenses are one, that it's a lot of hassle for what I think is going to be not much difference. Um, and the companies who make lenses like that don't really want advertising like that. They want you to say that it has a certain something. And uh, you're dealing with marketing here. Um, remember, companies put an awful lot of effort into marketing. Uh, they have various ambassadors and things like that. If you see a photograph being used in marketing um, and it's uh, for a particular lens company, you can be sure that that picture could likely, unless it's a very specialised lens, have been taken on a vast variety of cameras and a vast variety of lenses. So it really doesn't make that much difference. So, um, yeah, if somebody likes to send me some expensive lenses, I'll have a look at them. But I can't say I'm that interested. It's the extremes that I like. The reason I cover the extremes is because these lenses have jobs to do. Um, even ultra cheap lenses. This one here is another 135mm lens. This is a, um, a Hanimar f3.5. It's actually quite sharp. I've tested this and I've used it for making a specialist macro lens. Similarly, here's a 200mm lens. Now this one, uh, which is a Fotax f4.5 200mm lens, is absolutely useless outdoors. And the reason it's useless outdoors is because it has inside it um, sort of so much reflective surfaces that if you've got sun in the scene, any bright light coming in bounces around inside and you get very low contrast off it. Uh, but then again, this is one of the lenses that cost me £7.50 um, I used to experiment. I get, would get more out of taking a lens like this, which is 
you know, truly is a rubbish lens. Uh, I know it has its fans, but it's a rubbish lens. This Helios lens, I would get more out of going out and using this to take some photos than I would a four or five thousand pound 50 mil f1.2 prime. Um, if I want an f1.2 prime, I've got an old Olympus f1.2 and I've also got the Canon EF150 1.4, which is actually does all the fancy stuff you want. So you don't need to spend the money. If you've got lots of money and you feel the need to spend it, I do do bespoke one-to-one -one training. Um, you know, just if you feel the need to get rid of some of that spare money. Um, I do enjoy doing the training work. I'm based in the UK. Um, but if you ever want specialist stuff, it is part of the stuff that we do at North Lake, as well as the commercial photography. But anyway, that's finished the plug for that. I hope this meandering is of some interest. Um, and thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. And the real thing is, learn to use the kit you've got. You don't need to spend lots of money to improve your photography. You've got lots of money, spend it on a worthwhile cause. Um, you'll get far more out of it. I know I will. So, thanks very much. Bye.